Hi boys and girls. Hey, welcome to Micro Sessions Brewing. Yes, I am your host, Leo J. Bailey. Pay no attention to that. Attention. Let's try that again, shall we? Boys and girls, welcome to Micro Sessions Brewing. Yes, I am your host, Leo J. Bailey. Pay no attention to the imposter that was here before. She has nothing to do with this today. Cheers. Uh, this is my Citra IPA that I didn't decide. It's the second time I've done it. I talked a little bit about it. If you saw it on the last short little update YouTube thing, eh, what are you going to do? I've done it twice before. I made some changes and I'm not digging on it, but you know, it's a pretty drinkable beer, I think. It seems to be getting better with age. Eh, I like it. It's all right. It's not what I was going for, but what are you going to do? Hey, cheers. Today, odd little experiment I've decided to do. I'm going back to my early days of the Gig Award where I used to mash in on the gigawort because it was easier to control and then I would boil on the propane outside and my early kits even before that we scaled down a recipe I've decided to do it's a it's my simple it's my basic IPA it's two row a lot of two row and a little bit of caramel tint for color that's it I'm doing Amarillo hops and mosaic hops and I'm using the S4, Fermentus S4, it's not O4, I think it's just S4. Um, it's the English Ale, I'm just calling this, um, what am I calling oh, it's the English IPA. I, I don't know what else to call it, I don't have names for shit. Eh. Anyway, I've scaled this thing down completely to what will be a two and a half gallon <sighs> keg when I'm done. We'll see how this goes. I've never done the Gigawart with all of my pump, my chiller, my lines, everything that I use on the claw hammer, basically. Um, the only thing is that, of course, I don't have a spray head for the Giga Ward, so I just laid the claw hammer top on top of it. It is currently cycling water right now. I'm getting ready to heat it up. Um, cheers. I'll show you a little bit of footage. I'll let you know what worked out, what my numbers were, and um, <laughs> we, we'll see. We'll keep this one as I'll try to keep this one super short. It's a it's an experiment. I have no idea how this is gonna go today. Hmm. Oh yeah. Went to go see my girl from Ginger at uh, Jiffy Lube Live last night with my boys Bill and uh, Chris, which you know from all of our stuff here. So I'm tired. I'm off today. It's vacation. It's a Thursday and I have nothing better to do than to get in trouble. It's raining. Can't get out in the garden. So, you know. Cheers, people. I shall see you shortly. Mm. It's growing on me. Hi, kids. Hey, real quick. Recipe for the English IPA is four pounds, eight ounces of two row four ounces of Bryce Caramel 60. I didn't have any 10. So, I wanted to get some color in there, get my SRM up pretty much where it should be. Had to, because it was less of the 60, I had to increase my two row, not a big deal. Everything's all nice and balanced as far as um, in my scale. Four pounds, eight ounces of two row, four ounces of Caramel 60. I've got a quarter ounce of Mosaic at the 60 minute mark, quarter ounce of Amarillo at 15, uh, three quarters of an ounce of Amarillo at zero, you know, at, at flame out, and another quarter ounce of Mosaic at flame out. And that's it. Um, doing the SO4, it was SO, SO4. Yeah, and that's it. Um, as it stands now, I'll give you some numbers. Mash water, 3.81 gallons. And my strike temp was 154, my mash in was 149 for 60 minutes. And my current numbers are, my boil volume is supposed to be 3.4 gallons, I was dead on. I mean, literally dead on. 
unfortunately, my pre-boil gravity at uh, 1037 was supposed to be 1043. I tried to squeeze the crap out of them. Eh, we can do it. Oh, and I used a bag instead of the hop <laughs> basket. Wasn't big enough. Um, so that's where we stand right now. My original gravity should be about 1058. Eh, we're going to see how this all stands out after my boil. This little guy is going to be tricky getting a boil in it without boiling all over the freaking place. So we're going to see how that works out. As it stands now, we're looking at a 5% beer. I think it's supposed to finish at like 1014. Eh, it isn't. It's going to it's gonna finish less than that. I guarantee it. So it's going to be more than likely above a 5% beer. And then I'll give you all the other... Uh, yeah, there it is. 1014. Uh, it's... it's We'll see how that goes. Um, currently, I'm looking at about a 41 to 43 IBU. So yeah, we're going to boil, which we're heating up right now. We're going to get that boiled. And then when I come back, after I clean up everything, I'll give you some final words on how everything uh, went. Oh, and I'll talk about the fermenter. I did some minor things to my little carboy. And hopefully, I'm going to do a as close to a non-oxygen transfer as I can get. So, I'll show you what I did on that later. So anyway, rock and roll. We're going to get this boil going and 120 volts is slow. And now I know why I love my claw hammer. Eh. So anyway, we'll see you in a little bit. Welcome back. Hey, <clears throat> Deb, Adam came over. We got distracted. Some filming stopped. What are you going to do? <sighs> Cheers. This is the uh, Blue Rose Belgian wit. Cheers. Hey, look. Man, the English IPA did some weird stuff. The Gigawart, and this is the first time, I gotta be honest, it's the first time I've used the Gigawart like this. Had the pump, had the chiller, I did the boil, I did everything. I did the mash in, I did the boil, I did everything with it. I've never done that before. It got weird. Eh. So, anyway. I uh, told you the, the recipe. <sighs> My numbers are weird, man. Very disappointing. My pre-boil gravity was, where was that, 1037, which was already low for the targeted 1044. And then in the end, man, I don't know what happened. I guess I caught it. I wasn't, I mean, I was paying attention, but I was distracted. Adam and Deb came over. Not their fault. I'm the one that got distracted. It stopped boiling. My damn unit turned off. I don't know why. Didn't over temp. Didn't do it. Just turned off. Um, anyway, I got it back up to boiling. We finished boiling. Uh, transferred. Threw my tilt in. And I had a targeted of 1058 on my original gravity. And I'm only at 1044. But my volume is at like 2.7. I, I, yeah, so I'm currently looking at about a 4.3% fucking IPA. Can you even call it an IPA? 43 IBU. Um, I think it's going to finish out more, so it's probably going to be closer to you know, 4.7, if, uh, if I get lucky, I don't know, man, weird, um, my attenuation is a little lower than targeted, my mash efficiency was shit, I was targeted at 80%, I was at 69, yeah, man, I don't know quite what to think of this one, so, hey, it's worth an experiment, and not, you don't always get them right, so, I'll come back, I'll talk to you back, Kagan, let you know how things went, cheers, mm weird damn day. <sighs> Hi kids. How you doing? Hey. The Belgian wet. <sighs> Welcome back. Very briefly, um, I'll show you a couple pictures about how about right now. I just did a oxygen free transfer. It's a rig. <laughs> um, I did what I did because it was that what I had on hand and it worked. 
beautifully. So I took an old racking cane and some hose, connected it to the black disconnect, which is typically your outlet. And I used my Blickman uh, beer gun, used the CO2 and the, um, uh, the tank, the gauge, everything there, connected it to the top of my carboy in the little orange fitting that you see. I know somebody else has done this. I'm not doing anything new. Um, put some CO2 into it, flushed it, put the racking, took the airlock out, put the racking cane in it, immediately went over into the keg, um, put almost just a little over 20 pounds. Uh, we were pushing almost 20 and a half pounds. So I'm a little under in the two and a half gallon range, but which is what, 21 pounds, 15 ounces? Eh, so, or 21 and a half, sorry. Um, 21, eight ounces. We were just over about 20 and a half. But look, that's fine. I think my volume was just, was wonderful. It transferred, I have no idea what it tastes like. Color looked good. It's kind of dark. As you can tell by the carboy, we will see when we do a tasting. Um, anyway, <laughs> yeah, we'll see how it figures out. Oh, and it finished, as I said before, it finished at 10.07. So, Brewfather says it's a 4.9er, which I guess is all right. It's not what I was going for. I will make those corrections in the future when I do another two and a half gallon brew. Right now, I'm really excited. It's taking me completely out of my schedule. Oh, and real quick, um, I go out of town this week. It's going to carb. The English IPA is going to carb for a week. I will come back, see you next weekend, and mere seconds for you, and do a tasting. And then we'll be done with this one. I'm real excited. Uh, I've got a local winery here in town in the valley that uh, they have a bunch of different hops. They've got Centennial, Simcoe, and Cascade, I think. I want to get a couple of pounds of Centennial because they've offered, all I got to do is just go in there and buy some wine and, and you can get all the hops you want. Um, I'm going to go and I'm going to make a wet hopped IPA. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to just go for the five gallon batch of that and just go for that for the first time ever. I love, I, nobody does them very often. I don't know, man. I had one locally quite a few years ago and it was fucking phenomenal. Anyway, enough of this. I'm trying to keep this one real quick. I'll see you guys next week. We'll do a tasting and cheers, you fine people. See y'all. Hmm. Huh. I didn't turn any of the air conditioners or anything off. God, it's noisy in here. Yeesh. Hello, boys and girls. Hi there. <laughs> We're done. Hey, look. That is the English IPA. Uh, we're all done. We've been in a keg for almost... I lost track. I don't think it's two weeks yet. I wonder if you can see any of that. Ooh, look at that. I will say, a little hazy, a little dark darker than what it looks on camera to me I think the light is shining through you know that's probably that's probably more like what I see um, it's got a great head on it it's carbonated I can see bubbles I know that you guys probably can't they're definitely tiny and they rise like crazy up in here it's got a head that sticks around I have tried this I try to let them age a little now if possible This had a fair amount of uh, mosaic and shit. I said it somewhere further back in this video. <laughs> Might have been Amarillo. I can't remember now. God damn it. I should have looked. Oh, God damn it. All right. I'll come back to that. Let me pull this up. Son of a bitch. All right. Um mild aroma I get a little bit of pine but in an odd way not bad odd just odd S 
slightly, slightly piney is what I'm getting here. A little earthy, like a touch of earthy maybe. Anyway, cheers. It has been a busy, I got other things been happening that you'll see coming. Cheers. Who? All right. What to say about this beer? My numbers, obviously, as stated before, were not everywhere they should have been. I should have mashed out. Four is low in ABV as this is, and it should have been in the five-five range, and the kegger just kicked on. Um, it ended up just I think under five just at five or just under five um, it shows it's way too light um, there's no alcohol kind of burn or body to it at all there is an interesting flavor there is a little bit more malt to this it's SO4 so you know calling it an English IPA it's probably if anything not an IPA maybe closer to an English pale ale or something along that lines maybe um, if I do this on the claw hammer I suspect it will turn out different it is very very stinking dry and it was mosaic and Amarillo as I thought okay so I get some interesting pine notes um, forgive me man it's so dry and hot out here right now my sinuses are just a wreck and I'm squirrel I'm all over the place today um, it's really dry and I like a dry IPA I like dry beers in general unless you start getting into that malt forward aspect I just don't like them too sweet this could have used a little sweet this could have used a little more not as dry had I had a tilt in it had I not had the 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 the, the gravity issue I would not have let it finished out as hard as it did. I will admit that. It's bitter. It's got a bite. It's not a bad bite. It's almost... I wouldn't call it citrusy by any means. But it's... It's got a bit of a... It's not an alcohol bite, that's for damn sure. It's... Bitter and a bit dry. I think the combination between the two doesn't work for it as well had it been a little bit more alcohol. Too bitter for as low ABV as it is. Nah, that's how I see it anyway. Will I drink it? Yeah, probably. As a matter of fact, the party gathering that will be coming up after this where I've brewed, you will see shortly. Um, we're going to do a whole thing. There's a gathering in October for a good cause and good reasons. I brewed a wet hopped IPA. I have no idea how that turned out yet. Um, it's ferment in a way. I brewed a blonde stout, which I've never done before. Who knows how that's going to turn out. And I'm hoping to take whatever is left of this in a two and a half gallon kegger. And if the Amarillo wheat turns out, which is still in its second week of fermenting so i've got three beers going right now jesus oh, i still have some citra ipa i still have some um, belgian wit which is getting real low those two kegs will either be tapped or bottled by the time i need the kegs for the other beer so cheers people try to keep them quick as if i can so hey rock and roll <sighs> summertime people it is crazy and noisy. <laughs> Rock and roll. Cheers. Oh. <sighs> eh, I can drink it. What the hell? Eh. See ya.